How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Rolling Lines and Apples and Genos production, the only after dark afternoon live show in the fantasy hockey universe. My name is Josh Hutchinson, and I'll be your host today. Blake and I will be discussing must make moves, power play deployment, zero G targets, and we'll be taking mailbag questions. So without further ado, let's go. <laughs> Blake, thank you for joining me, my friends. Coming in clutch today. Oh, yeah, buddy. Anytime Josh calls, I pick up the phone immediately because, yeah, you know what? You make me better, buddy. And I appreciate it, especially with that beautiful hat. Oh, my God. You got to get over to YouTube and check out this man's hat. It's a beautiful pink hat. What chaos. Great podcast, actually. Really good. It is a fantastic podcast. Yeah. They just started last year, and I've got I've got the What Chaos shirt as well. They, they did a big oh. merch drop. Uh, paid an insane amount of duty because they are from the states, and uh, that was not expected. So, wasn't super thrilled about that. But the, the merch how, what is a fan you are of, of the that quality part. of the merch is fantastic. So uh, you you can't really deny that. So I'm I'm trying to wear it as much as possible because I paid a, a fucking irresponsible amount of money for it. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> good, buddy. Yeah, man. Uh, I, so uh, what, what's going on? How are how's your week going? It's going good. Uh, man, Tuesday was awesome. Like I know there's some, pe some people like the frozen frenzy. Some people don't. I love it. I think it's amazing. Like it's just an exciting day. You're like my phone's just going off. Like I don't know if you have Twitter notifications on, but like I have so many Twitter notifications. So it's just like zzz, 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 and every potential <laughs> tweet is like, yes, my guy got a goal. This is incredible. And and I actually had a good day too. Like uh, you know, all my big guns kind of popped off and and put me in some good spots there. So yeah, um, I'm I'm doing okay to start, but my season hasn't started awesome. Like I'm 0-2 in Kakupo. Yeah. Uh, I took a bad beat in the last one. Like the guy who beat me had the highest point total. I think I had the second. So it's just, you know, that that's the way it goes for me in Kakupo sometimes. But yeah, 0-2 there. 0-2 in the listener league. That one stings because Ooh. these guys are just having their way with me. And, you know, because I have all these buy lows, you know, I got Stamkos. I got Hyman. I got just a bunch of guys. J-Rob. Guys that are not popping off that probably should be popping off. So that's tough. But yeah, this has been a good week so far. I'm crossing my fingers i need to get off the schneid how about you buddy yeah i'm in two listener leagues one of them i'm one and one and i'm doing okay that's actually the one that i do have hymen in which uh we'll talk about hymen a little bit later but uh the the other one is has been real tough i have kachuk and barkov in that one yeah. the two of my early picks uh it's just been i've it been riddled with injuries and uh i i just haven't been able to to uh i don't know to account for it so I'm gonna probably have to make some moves in that one to uh, to try and try and stay competitive because it's I'm 0 and 2 and I'm down in my matchup this week so it's not not looking good but uh, in terms of the the uh, the keep three doing pretty well in that one uh, for our experts league uh, couple I'm two and 0 uh, I'm winning my matchup this week too so that yeah. that feels good it always feels good when couple goes well. But the last couple of years, Kakupo has gone well, and almost everything else hasn't. So uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to kind of level the playing field a little bit. Yeah, buddy, I would love that. I've had such bad luck in Kakupo, and it's a league I actually care about. Like I want to do well in, and I and I yeah. prioritize. And it's just been stinky so far. So, anyways, I don't want to go 0 three. I'm ahead of my matchup there by a big margin. So I'm hoping I can can take the dub there. Blake, let's let's jump into uh, uh, let's just talk about a few things that have happened in this past week and just some storylines uh, over the league. Um, the Winnipeg Jets, man, they're six and zero, the only undefeated team left in the NHL. Have you watched any Jets hockey? Because um, they, I mean, I I don't know, they've looked fine. I don't think they've looked spectacular. Connor Hellebuck has looked great, but. Uh, uh, and, and I, I don't know the top six is the top six is scoring. Mark Shifley's got a bunch of goals. Kyle Connors looked good. Nikolai Ehlers, uh, really solid. And, uh, mom spaghetti, Cole Perfetti Ooh, yeah. uh, has really been popping the last week or so. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. What do you think about the jets here, buddy? Yeah. I mean, 
I, it's I think they're overachieving for sure. But yeah. when you got a goaltender the the caliber of Hellebuck, like you're gonna be in every game, right? And the truth is, like he's playing pretty damn consistent. You know, we talk about goalies a lot here, zero G, and I'm like I subscribe to zero G. Um, Hellebuck is an interesting case because he's he's put together some consistent seasons here, and you know, just when you think you know, okay, this is the year the Jets are really gonna you know fall down, they aren't gonna be able to do it again. He starts popping off, and and I think they. Uh, they didn't really perform very well last year. Like guys like Cal Connor, for instance, really not a great season by his standards last year. And he's starting to pop off this year. Plus, yeah, when you're getting a ton of production from Mom Spaghetti, I mean, geez. And we got Ehlers on the top power play. That's that's it right there, isn't it, Josh? You put Ehlers I mean, on the top power play, you don't lose a game. That's I think that's what, what I'm gleaning from this. That's right. Yeah, that that's the only thing you can glean from it. It's everything we've ever wanted, and uh, they are reaping the benefits. Uh, I don't know that their power play really is popping that much. Yeah. Um. But uh, they, they have looked. They have looked really good five v five, and 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 Ehlers has been popping uh, at least uh, at that level uh, with Cole Perfetti along his side. Yeah. Um. The only winless team left because Nashville won last night is the San Jose Sharks. Not as surprising. Um, especially with Celebrini out, uh, it's not not looking good over there in San Jose. They've gotten stomped a couple times by the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, they're making Anaheim look really good, which is uh, which is hard <laughs> to do. So, um, yeah. So I, I mean, there's not there's not much else to say about that. But in terms of the scoring leaders over the last week, Kale McCarr nine points in four yep. games. He has looked stellar. Um, and right alongside him, McKinnon and Rantanen both with seven points in four games. And then Cole Perfetti also with seven points. They're all tied for second in the league over the last week uh, in scoring. And then there's a bunch of names that have six points over the last week. Some of them are uh, the usual suspects. Some of them are not. Uh, so I, I wanted to go through some of these. Uh, Nikita Kucherov. Tage Thompson, Artemi Panarin, Nikolai Ehlers, Timo Meyer. Those guys are the guys that you expect to have six points in four games, three games. Not, not, not a big surprise. Here are some of the surprising ones. J.J. Mosier, two goals, four assists in the last three games. Outstanding. A lot of Tampa Bay Lightning because they have been scoring a lot, except against the Leafs. Uh, but they have been scoring a lot. They had eight goals last night. Um, Anthony Sorelli has six points. Brandon Hagel. Had a nice natty hattie yesterday, which was pretty cool. So I, I knew, I thought of you right away. I knew Blake was probably pretty stoked about the natty hattie for Brandon Hagel. And then we got Michael Granlin, Nate Streamer Boy, and Neil Pionk from the Jets. Uh, any of those names popping out at you? Any of those guys you're wanting to pick up, Blake? Or is this all just kind of a flash in the pan for all of these these fellas? Yeah, funny stuff. I mean, in some of my deeper leagues, I picked up JJ Moser. I actually had him yeah. for this this performance here the other night, which was unexpected. I sometimes pick up guys, especially in Kakuffle, um, just guys that can chip away. I'm gonna get games from them and maybe like two to three fantasy points a game, you know, based on their blocks and shots, even with no goals. So that was sort of my thinking with Moser. And then the guy popped the hell off. Damn. So I, I mean, we can't expect this with Moser. There's no question there, but I mean, he could be. He could be the number two guy there, right? They don't have a lot of options in Tampa Bay. So um, I, I like the potential deployment and opportunity for Moser there. If Hedman goes down, I mean, are they really going to throw Darren Radish out there? I, I <laughs> Maybe, but I, I like Moser's floor. I think Moser has a decent floor. Could be a 35 to 40 point defenseman this year with maybe a, a touch more ceiling there. So I like that. Granny, I think, is a really good piece. Like, yeah, we you talked about San Jose, you know, being real stinky and they are. But the goals they are scoring are all from like the same players. And it's Mikhail Granlin. It's William Eklund. These guys are are doing stuff out there. It's really good. Nate tweeted today about those two players. And and I, I get it. Like Granlin is, he's getting a crap ton of minutes. This guy is like, you know, 22 minutes a night. It's insane. And he's doing something with it. He's actually shooting a little bit more than he normally does. So I like Granlin a lot. I think that's a player that should probably be on a roster at this point. Sorelli, Moser, Pionk, no. I mean, that, those are those guys are streamers. If you had them, congratulations to you and Brandon the Bagel Hagel. Buddy, I'm so glad. When you start to see uh, in our Discord, guys are like, do I drop Hagel? What do I do with Hagel? You're like, you hold him because he's Hagel. He's awesome. Remember I talked about the zone entries, Josh? Oh, yeah, yes. buddy. Yes, yes. Uh, Schneider, just, I, don't, I don't know. That was a player I was interested in this year just because of, of how he shows out in the micro stats, but 
great game for him. That's not something we can expect, but it's nice they do have a little bit of secondary scoring there in Tampa. So, yeah. But give me Granny. Give me Moser for the week, and let's see what's going on. Yeah, I don't think you allow us to forget uh, about the zone entries, Blake. You, but yeah, uh, you, you bet you, your sweet bippy, buddy. You continually I, let us know. Uh, I should not I should stop shooting from the hip because I just looked up power play percentages. The Jets are first in the league. Uh, they, they have a 44.4% yeah. uh, conversion rate. So uh, they've actually been killing it on the power play. I was Happens wrong, to me so. every time when I'm like, yeah, I think I know that. I'll say that. And I'm like, <laughs> no, no it's, it's not right. No, Damn it. No, All completely right, wrong. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, this is a nice, this is a fun little segment that I thought that I would keep going. Uh, Philip Gustafson has more goals than Brad Marchand. Oh, God. Carter Verhage, Matthew Kachuk, Elias Pedersen, PLD, uh, another one of your boys, oh, God. Uh, Owen Tippett, and Zach Hyman. It's ugly for these guys so far. Um, but wait, yeah, I thought I'd, I thought I'd keep this going. This is, this is a fun little, little segment here. Uh, we'll see, we'll see if Gustafson scores another, yeah. uh, or if any of these guys get off the schneid next week. Some silky All mitts right. on Gus there. I love that. Um, and yeah, I man. love Flurry being like, yeah, go for it. Shoot the, you know, shoot the puck. Like Flurry is such a beauty. Um, I love Gus this year, man. He's, he's really come to play. He's on one right now. Yeah, he's been a top goalie in the league, and they're playing the shit out of him, like even more than I expected. So that's mm -hmm. really exciting. They had that that uh, they talked about how they're keeping Wallstead up with the team for the whole year, and I'm like, are we really doing this three goalie carousel here? I have all these shares in Gustafson, and then he's played so well that they've just been riding with him. Yeah, uh, the teams look good too. Well, Minnesota's look great. I'm gonna take some questions from the chat here. Uh, Solar Facade says. Hey, fellas, appreciate your thoughts on Mikhail Sergachev. So, yeah, Sergachev, he's got one assist in the last five games, four assists overall in seven games this year. Um, average time on ice right now over the last five games is uh, over 27 minutes of time on ice. Uh, on ice shooting percentage at 5v5, 9.7%. IPP, 17%. So, you know what? This guy, this guy is going to... Uh, this guy's going to bounce back. It's fine. He's getting all the deployment. Yeah, he's getting played on that top power play. Utah has been okay. They're ri yeah, right middle of the pack on the power play. But I remember looking at the underlying numbers, and they don't really generate as much. They're they're kind of overachieving there. So yeah. I don't know if that's part of it. But yeah, Sergachev, I think, will be fine. I don't know. What are your thoughts on Sergachev, Blake? Yeah, I, I echo all that. I, I wasn't that high on Sergachev going into the year here. I think he still wears this tag of the player that got, you know, 30 power play points basically with Tampa Bay, but he's just not that player to me. Like this is a guy that I think can get 50 to 55 points potentially this year. And with Dersey out, I'm not even sure if it's a if it's a net positive for, for Sergachev. Because I think Dersey was taking a lot of like tough minutes as well. I mean, they were both up together. They were pairing, but you know, now the the load is going to be much heavier for Sergachev, and and we'll see how he handles it. I also think Utah overachieved so far this season. Like, you know, we'll talk about Genther in a little bit here, but that's a guy that yeah popped off, and maybe it was fool's gold, right? We love Genther, but do we love him for what we were expecting after the first you know couple games there? Like, probably not, right? So I think yeah. things are going to settle, and you know, Sergachev's probably going to end up being like a forty-five to fifty-five point defenseman. So a couple a couple Sergachev questions, very similar. Uh, Jason asked the same thing. Just want to shout out Jason here. Christian Talk uh, says, As someone dropped wool in my league with Stolers popping off. Worth a pickup? I mean, sure. Yeah, if you can stash him on your IR+, plus, that's fine. Um, Barube said that he could be back, uh, I mean, yesterday. Um, but they ended up starting uh, Dennis Hildeby, so, and that didn't look overly great so we'll see uh you could see wool by the end of the week they do have a couple more couple more games uh, i i imagine it's it's possible for him to get one of these starts but the whole injury thing with him has been so mysterious it's kind of hard to know uh but yeah if you can stash him on your ir plus he's definitely worth worth an ad for sure i think once he's healthy they're going to want to play him so and and they're gonna probably want to to rest stolers a little bit because he's been so good but he has uh, he's had injury troubles in the past as well. So um, it, it, you're probably going to want to share the load a little bit there. I don't know, Blake, are you, are you picking up wool if he's there? 
Probably not. But I mean, what are you, what do you think when Wall is fully healthy and you got Solars who has been playing really well, who's taking the net? Are they going to tandem it? Are they going to, do you think they're, they're leaning one way or the other based on even just what, what Stolars has been able to do? Or is it, you know, kind of the history with Wall and the, and the acumen that they might lean into? I think the investment in Wall probably warrants them playing him a little bit. But if he struggles right out of the gate, I think they'll have no issue sticking with Stolars. Like Stolars has been, outstanding like he he's looked so good there have been yeah. no weaknesses there have been no moments where you're like uh oh like he has well, been so must feel steady. really good man for at least yeah it, do, it yeah, certainly like, does you. i mean like that save the other night was ridiculous I yeah that say. was awesome Nuts, yeah, yeah pulling it right off the goal line that was crazy but uh yeah no i think uh yeah i i think stolars probably has stolen the one a spot but that being said, like the way that they were talking about Wool going into the season, it really seems like they're committed to him being a part of of this team mm -hmm. going forward. So, and really, I mean, it's just been injury that's been the issue. Whenever he's played, he's been great. So, um, I'm I'm not concerned about him like not playing at all. Um, but I do think that Stolarz has probably proven to be the guy that they that they trust right now, at the very least. So he's probably the one A, but Wall I think is going to get some time. So you it may so him coming back will probably hurt your Stolarz shares, but not as much as maybe you're you're thinking. Uh, Ian says, "Hey fellas, who would who would you keep on your roster out of these pure C's in a F oh in an uh in an FW bangers league?" Uh, Casey Middlestat, Sean Monahan, or Josh Norris? Oh, uh, absolutely! You're keeping, uh, you're keeping Josh Norris. I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's even close. Uh, I think it's interesting. It's, uh, I would keep Norris too. So I agree with you there. Um, and one thing, like, I don't know if you're any face uh, in, in any face-off leagues there, Josh, but I'm in one, and it's. I, I didn't uh, put it into my strategy very well. Like I'm basically punting yeah. at this point. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. well, I'm getting smoked on face-off wins. So it's not something that I'm real like up on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think of these guys, I'm not even sure who the best face-off player is, but I, I think there's a conversation. Like Middlestat's still doing the thing. He's on power play one in Colorado. He's, he's the 2C there. Monaghan is getting a ton of minutes and – you know, he's got power play one there as well in um, Columbus, who are a bit surprising this year. I, I really feel like Columbus yeah. is playing well, playing um, motivated, clearly, right? Um, due to all this offseason stuff and all the injuries as well. Just the most unlucky franchise in the league by far. I've never even seen anything like this. So, yeah, but I think Norris, I love where he's at right now. I mean, power play one, that's a team that gets a ton of power plays, Ottawa, and they're cooking, right? They're, you know, Winnipeg's number one, Ottawa's number two. And we got Norris on there. He's doing stuff, right? This guy, the metrics don't look good, but he's a very efficient player. And I think, you know, he hits too. So I think there's lots of value with Josh Norris. Yeah, I, I like Norris a lot. Um, uh, Armin Safari says, Samsonov or Ananen in a Cats league. My other goalie is Skinner. Available free agents are Hofer, Lion, Jari, Ned. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd probably go with... Uh, oh, man, that's that's tough. It's, it's hard to know what to... Uh, what to think about Ananen because they were so uh they were so set on starting Georgiev and now all of a sudden Ananen gets two starts but they're kind of being quiet about it it's like are they giving Georgiev a break or are they are are they shifting their 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 trust to Ananen I mean he has looked good in the two starts so uh, if it was me, I'd probably ride with the hot hand but uh, I don't especially through this time where they're so thin uh up front uh i, I don't know man what are, what are your thoughts yeah. here samsonov has had a couple starts in a row as well yeah no i'm not interested in samsonov at all but uh i am interested in Ananen because uh it's funny you said hot hand because that actually came out today jared bednar they asked him like is this guy gonna get more starts right and they said he's gonna start on thursday which is colorado's next game so he's gonna get another one and they're gonna ride the hot hand this is what this is jared bednar's words so i think that like the, the stuff he was saying about georgiev it was probably like they're trying to say the right thing. You can't just come out and say like, no, we're not going to play our number one goalie. Like, I think there was a mental aspect to that. Like the guy was playing like crap, but you know, he got a vote of confidence from the head coach. He's our guy. He's our number one guy, but you know, you can't just keep throwing a guy in there. If you know, he's a complete sieve, right? You're losing games based on your goaltending. Like their goaltending has been horrible. So I think Ananen is going to get a little run here. So it might not be like, you know, people talk about dropping Georgia. That's an interesting conversation. Maybe we can have a little bit later, but I think that Ananen is going to get 
have some value here over the next couple of weeks while Georgie figures things out. So I like Annan in there. I mean, of the other free agents too, like we need to see more from Hofer. We need to see uh, how they're going to deploy him, right? Because Bennington got the last start, lost the game. So do they go back to Hofer here? That would be interesting, right? I'm holding him in one spot. Um, Lion, yeah, this guy's amazing, but Detroit is just you know they're they're on a wing and a prayer right now like they they had no business winning that game against the islanders the other night but you know lion had another amazing game so i just don't like goalies that are really reliant on standing on their heads right and that's what lion is right now yeah. like what happens when he doesn't what happens when he has his b game he gets shelled for six goals you know what i mean so yeah. and and yeah so lion i mean he's good but i, I would easily kick him to the curb Jerry and, and Ned, I'm not interested in the Pittsburgh goalies at this point, uh, especially because no. we still don't know what's going on. Yeah, I'm moving off of Pittsburgh for sure in terms of goaltending. Uh, and yeah, I like what you said about Lyon. Detroit has been so bad. Yeah. Uh, like they, they've looked so terrible. They had 10 shots last yeah, game. Unreal. And they won one nothing uh, just because Lyon stood on his head. So uh, I am not. I'm not banking anything on on the Detroit Red Wings right now outside of all of my Patrick Kane shares. I have him in more than more than any anyone else uh in in my leagues cuz wow. I got him for for value, but uh he he hasn't been like spectacular either. He did score last night, but um Co uh, lost one says Cooley's been impressed me on the Rangers. I hope he gets more 5v5 ice time soon. Bangers Butte too. Yeah, I took a look uh quickly. Will Cooley a goal and four assists in his last five games, six points in six games so far this year. So he's point per game, uh getting 13 just over 13 minutes time on ice. Shots per 60 rank in the league so far. Uh over the last five games, 19th and individual scoring chances four per 60, 22nd. So this guy has been looking very good. Um, he's a guy that I was interested in going into this year, actually. But it, it, there's not really the opportunity there in, in New York. But this is a guy that um, does get pretty nice numbers under the hood. And he's really taking it to another level so far this year. I don't know. What are your thoughts on Cooley? Yeah, he's just one of those guys, like a 12 to 15 minute guy that, yeah, he's popping off right now, which is really nice, but he does have a great floor in bangers leagues because of the hits um, and the pims. But yeah, uh, what the, New York has that amazing third line again, like Philip Hedo, Capo Caco, they obviously play well together and it used to be Lafreniere, but now it's Will Cooley and he's doing stuff. You know who he reminds me of is, you know, and maybe Nate would take issue with this, but like Ross Colton, when Ross Colton's getting like 12 minutes yeah. to 15 minutes, you're like, yeah, this guy, there, there's something there. Like, imagine Will Cooley on the top power play with the Rangers. <laughs> like, okay, you know, now we're interested. Now we're looking at, you know, maybe a 30 and 30 guy. I don't even know. But, um, yeah, that's that's not in the cards. So, Will Cooley's just a, he's a streamer level for now. Maybe a maybe a hold in a bangers league. Yeah, for sure. Um, the chat is absolutely popping right now, but I do think we need to to continue with with our, our regular scheduled content. But we'll get back to it at some point. Um, so, uh, we'll go to shift change and we're going to talk about our ad and our drop of the week. So my ad of the week right now, at least for the rest of this week is Morgan Frost. He is 7% rostered in Yahoo leagues. Um, he has three games with two off nights left this week, which is the best schedule, um, that you can get, uh, uh Philly and New Jersey. The only two teams that have that New Jersey doesn't have a ton of, of, uh, they're, they're pretty top heavy. They don't have a ton of, of, of great options. You got your Stefan Nasons, which, which, uh, I, I mean, he definitely has some value and he's been really good, but I'm going to go with Morgan Frost. Um, did get demoted at 5v5 yesterday and played under 14 minutes for the first time this year, but he has been getting the 18 to 20 minute treatment so far. Um, outside of that, was playing uh, when he got demoted, he played with Scott Lawton and Travis Konechny at 5v5. Mm. So that's still still not a bad situation. Uh, you're moving off of Michkov and, and, and Tippett, but but still getting a Konechny exposure. And he is still on power play one. They've stuck with the same unit all year so far, uh, which has been great. And they have been good. They've been scoring. They're like Philly is uh, I mean they're sixteenth of the league, but they're 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 scoring yeah, at twenty percent. Which last. is yeah, that's and the, hey man, that's right on track for you to for your hot take to to uh to come to fruition. So uh as long as they hold steady there right in the middle of the pack, uh you're 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 sitting pretty. Matt Vay Michkov is is uh having an effect on that team. But uh yeah, back to Morgan Frost. Uh underlying numbers aren't amazing. He's never really been a big underlying numbers guy. Uh, but he is being prioritized here. So 
Um, in in terms of the guys that are available on Philly, um, I that's a guy that I would I would seriously consider picking up at least for the rest of the week. Uh, what are your thoughts on Frost here, buddy? Well, first off, anytime you talk about Morgan Frost, you got to use his na- his his nickname, the Tinkly Winkly Man. Yeah, um, yeah, be- because Morgan Frost, really cool name, but doesn't that sound just like? you know, a villain's like actual name in reality, you know, before he turns into the tinkly winkly man, you know, like if this is Morgan Frost, like, you know, um, and, but his, he's kind of like Mr. Freeze only like not as powerful. Like maybe he just has like, you know, he's just really cold all the time and he makes people like uncomfortably cold. And I don't know where I'm going with that. Anyways, yeah. Morgan Frost, a fine pick. He's uh, yeah. Demoted. He's still in the top six. Good to go. No problem. Um, to me, I, I, my ad for this segment here is going to be Josh Norris. We talked about him a little bit, but he is 22% rostered there. Pretty damn nice. He's got two games left, right? So I think, yeah, Frost had three, but one of them is on the Saturday. And maybe you aren't, you know, he's probably not making your lineup there. So I think we're just looking at those off nights there, which Frost has two and Josh Norris has two as well. So um, to me, what we've seen with Norris so far, goal scoring, unsustainable, right? He's he's cooking for 37.5% his shooting percentage. That's not real, but... One thing that is real is Josh Norris is an efficient player, right? And he's done that throughout his injury-filled career. So, yeah, I think we talked about him a little bit earlier, but he's got great opportunity and deployment. We can't ignore that, right? This guy's getting great minutes with good players, um, you know, especially at the low price of 22%. Damn, get this man on your team and do it now. All right, so i like me some Josh Norris uh, for the remainder of the week there. Yeah, man, it's criminal uh, how, uh, like how available Josh Norris yeah. is right What are we now. doing? I, I did pick him up in one of my leagues in the, in the fantasy puck league, uh, s- sat him last night, uh, and probably would have been better off not sitting him, but, uh, he does have the two off nights. So he's definitely getting in my lineup the rest of the week, but that's a guy that I would probably consider holding in that league, um, uh, mm-hmm. depending on, on how things look in, in the coming weeks. Uh, Morgan Frost. It's funny. It's funny that you call him the tinkly winkly man, because I picture his dad was actually the in-house PA announcer for the Toronto Maple Leafs for, oh. uh, many years, Andy Frost and was, was, uh, known for his like very deep, very like oh, heavy oh. voice. So when I think about you, you talking about the tinkly winkly man, I hear like, uh, <laughs> The tinkly winkly man. No, like, you know like what? just like a guy like this this weird uh I don't know, dichotomy of like this 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 guy with this really deep voice being called the tinkly winkly man. Well, maybe, you know, maybe he's going the other way with it. Maybe he's rebelling against his father. His father had such yeah. a deep voice, and that's this man's villain origin story. He was known for his deep <laughs> voice. So he's the tinkly winkly man. Yeah, <laughs> I've never seen I haven't seen a Morgan Frost interview, so I don't know, you know, yeah. kind of the tone of his voice, but I'm assuming it's insanely high, like a man just huffing helium. Um, so yeah, that's my thought on the tinkly winkly man. You know, he's like, he's like, you know, one of those ice like clowns or something. I don't know. He has, I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, <laughs> Morgan Frost, big listener to the show. We're just joking around Morgan. All right. It's, it's he, all in good fun. He certainly looks like he has a high voice. He's one of those guys yeah, that just yeah. has a, has a, has a baby face and looks like he probably, probably will for the rest of his life. Um, uh, my drop is Jake DeBrusque. So this is this is maybe a little bit spicy here. And Blake, I'd love to hear your take on this. But he's 52% rostered, has only one game left this week. It's on Saturday. Probably not getting into your lineup um, if he's a fringe roster player. He has really bad underlying stats so far. Uh, I'm just going to pull them up here. But he's been pulled off of the top power play in favor of Connor Garland, who has been really good yep. um, so far this year. But... Um, despite his four assists in six games, uh, over the last five games, he's dropped under 16 minutes time on ice shots per 60 rank in the last five games, 258th and his individual scoring chances for per 60 rank is 146th, um, across the whole season. It's actually worse than that. Uh, in the first couple games, uh, it really was not looking good in terms of his underlying stats. So uh, not great. He did play alongside Brock Besser and JT Miller last night, which is is positive. He was down to the third line. Um, but yeah, I'm not liking the opportunity here for Jake DeBrusque anymore. And that was a big part of why I was banking on him to have a good season was that I thought that he would get a ton of opportunity. Um, and now that the power play uh, opportunity is gone, um, maybe it comes back, but for now, especially with their schedule, I think that's a guy that I'm probably cutting bait with, um, right now. I don't know, man. What, what have you seen from Jake DeBrusque, uh, in these Canucks games? Yeah. I mean, it's been uninspiring. That's for sure. It's just one of those things too, where, you know, the, the coach clearly isn't 
really too jazzed on on his style of play, right? And there was that one game where he played with PD. It was him and PD and Sprong, I think, or something like that. And they just got caved in. Like it was a horrible night for all three guys. The Corsi four percentage was just nuts. They were not generating anything and they were just, the ice was tilted against them. And yeah, like I think, I don't know. What I've seen so far with Jake DeBrus, I feel like it's going to take a little bit for him to kind of ensconce himself into this team, if I can use that word. Nice. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, it's like the Seinfeld episode when George ensconced himself in velvet. Did you ever see that? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, sweet. All right. Uh, you, I know you're a young man, but at least you you know some Seinfeld. Nate, he doesn't know what the hell's going on. All right. I don't know what he's watching on the regular, uh, but it's certainly not in line with what I watch. Anyways. Nate, Nate was a big, big bang theory fan from, from what uh, i remember okay. I, I don't know okay. i don't know if he if he I, I i can remember a time when big bang theory came out first i think nate showed me big bang theory which is is, is, is that crazy. the one with the, with the blonde lady and the tall skinny nerdy guy and the yeah 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 the nerd the nerds oh, okay yeah okay yeah. never saw it uh <laughs> but she's nice to look at i'll tell you and actually i don't mind the guy from roseanne either he's he's pretty good um anyways we're digressing here um <laughs> shout out to big bang theory and shout out to Jake DeBrusque, all right? I think that, uh, you know, he'll. this is one of those things. I think he's absolutely a drop right now, no question. But I think he could be a hold later on in the season, right? After things start to get better. Um, they've only been six games in. The Canucks have had, you know, three good games and three bad games. They really have. So uh, they're still trying to figure it out with the, some of the new people. And I, Talkit has been making some changes here, some tweaks. So I think DeBrusque will be back. He'll probably see time on that top power play again during the season but for now especially like you said with the schedule they only have four games uh between now and the end of next week so that that's that's not good enough you know um that that's not going to cut it for jake debrusque if he's getting 13 minutes a night so i think you can drop him for sure i don't think people are rushing to the wire to pick up jake debrusque but i would say this is a player you got to keep your eye on because he has had good metrics in the past he hasn't been able to do that here but, you know, I think once his confidence gets going, it looked like it was going to go too. the first game. Like, remember, did you see that highlight of his little dance after he assisted JT Miller or yeah. something like that? Like, yeah, yeah. He, was, he was feeling it, right? He was out there skating well. And that game was just a train wreck um, first game of the year. And it's it just hasn't gone well since then. So definitely keep an eye on DeBrus, but I'm, I'm fine with the drop. All right, man. Who are you dropping? I'm dropping him like it's lukewarm. His name is is Jamie Ben. All right. This man stinks. Just kidding. No, he doesn't stink. He's fine. He has a beautiful head of hair as well, but uh, we got to get a new haircut on this guy. I don't know if the slicked back is, and the, just that big goatee. I don't know if that's really, ro- you know, that's how we roll here in 2024, the year of our Lord. What are we doing? <laughs> Yeah, um, he's he's uh he he's clearly a, an elder statesman of the league that's that's stuck in in his look from ten years ago. Yeah, uh, he he really hasn't moved off of it, has he? Well, and I guess I mean he's big and mean, so who's telling him? Nobody, right? You're like, fine, JB, you you carry on with that haircut, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, Jamie Ben is 59% rostered, and I'm not saying that you have to drop Jamie Ben, right? I'm, and I don't think you're saying you have to drop Jake Jake DeBrusk, right? It's just like a player yeah. I think you could drop pretty comfortably and and I'm that's where I'm at with Jamie Ben. Um you know, he's still on the quote unquote top power play in Dallas, but they were doing some weird stuff there the other night where, you know, Matt Duchesne, it was Duchesne. Duchesne is getting more power play time than Jamie Ben, right? Uh so's Mason Marchman in the last game. So they're doing they're doing some weird stuff in there. I I think Dallas is so good and so deep in in with their forwards there. Like it's going to stink for fantasy. I think like Jamie Ben, his one claim to fame for fantasy is that he's on power play one. Right. And he had that yep. amazing year there. Um, you know, when Dallas popped off, but I, I think it's all downhill from here for Jamie Ben. Like uh, th- this could, this could be it for him. This might be the year where he truly falls off of that career resurgence that he had a couple years ago. Um, metrics are terrible with Jamie Ben. He's not generating anything. Two points in seven games stinks. All right. Not to mention over the rest of the week um, and next, just like the Canucks, he only has four games, but Dallas actually has a worse schedule. They have four in the next week and a half, but uh, I think they only have one off night. So they have two games this week, and then they only have two games next week, which are like a Friday, Saturday back-to-back. So if you hold on Jamie Ben, you're holding all through the week with no games played, and then he, you're only getting him in on the Friday, and then he's probably not even playing the Saturday. So it just seems like a good time to drop Jamie Ben to me. I don't Again, I don't think people are rushing to the wire to get him. And it's just not worth it to hold them, right, with what they're doing in Dallas. So, Jamie, Ben, thank you for your service. How can you talk poorly of the Sedins? You, you shouldn't do it, and that's what's happening now, right? Karma is finally biting this man in the butt. <laughs> yeah, he's he's an interesting character. I, I, I Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have the exposure to Wyatt Johnston 
5v5, which I think is is a big factor. Um, th- I think he probably uh, was, uh, was pulled along by Johnston a little bit more than maybe we were thinking. Um, and then their power play there, uh, first of all, it's been bad. It's the 30th ranked power play in the league so far. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they, they're splitting the time almost exactly evenly just because they have so much offensive depth so the power play one isn't even really like a true power play one even though it is loaded up like that's that's they it's loaded up like it is a power play a true power play one but it's not being deployed that way so um a little bit concerning there for 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 dallas in general but yeah jb ben i think is a is a very reasonable drop right now he's a guy that i ran and picked up in the uh in our keep three experts league uh because i was like wow this guy's on waivers uh mm-hmm. that's crazy and i picked him up and he's done absolutely nothing. yeah so it's like it, i i saw him in kickupful too someone dropped him in kickupful and i was like yeah. i think i got a must add him and then i just dug in real quick i was like no i don't yeah, why would i add good. this man no this is not good yeah it hasn't been good for ben for sure all right let's go to the power play planner so we're gonna take a look at a few a few power plays around the league and a few changes that have been made um, and just some, yeah, just some in- interesting situations. So the Buffalo Sabres, they had been having the split power plays uh, for a little while. They've kind of gone to a true power play one again. Uh, it's not the most ideal situation, but it is slightly better uh, than than it was. We've got Tage Thompson, Dylan Cousins, Rasmus Dahlin, J.J. Paterka, Jason Zucker. Uh, don't love the Jason Zucker pick there. J- Alex Tuck uh getting completely disrespected still producing uh despite not playing on power play one uh but yeah that that's uh that's concerning buffalo sabers the only team that has not scored a power play goal yet this year so that's uh that's not great uh i i and you know uh lindy maybe just try putting alex tuck out there that would uh that at least just try it just, you know? just, just help us out. What are you doing? I mean, he, the good thing with Tuck is like he, yeah, like you said, he doesn't really need power play one to be effective. This guy is a, yeah. a player that Lindy Ruff really relies on. I mean, you know, Don, uh, Granado relied on him as well. This is a guy that is very valuable uh, at even strength. He kills penalties. He's a great player. So I'm not, it, to me, it's just like Zucker. What the hell is Zucker doing out there? Like, I, you know, it's like Nick Paul on the power play in Tampa. Like, okay, I get the idea. Like, go stand in front of the net. Get your body in front of the goalie. It's like, yeah, you know, like, we, we could do better. You know, we could do better. So I, I hope they make the change there. But I, I do think that um, it's not as bad in Buffalo, the power play, as what we're what the numbers say, right? Like zero goals, that's going to change. That's not sustainable. They're not going to be the worst power play in the league. I, I really don't believe that. I think Thompson looks good. I think Cousins has been snake bit. This is a guy that's, you know, the metrics are looking really good for Dylan Cousins, but the points aren't there. And then Rasmus Dahlin too. I mean, he's he's been ice cold to start the year, maybe dealing with, you know, uh, the lingering effects of an injury, but he had a really nice game the other night there. Lots of, lot, he was chucking a lot of pucks, got some scoring chances, got some shots on the board. You know, I, I feel good about that player. Dalian's a big time buy low to me. So I'm looking, I'm interested there. And then Paterka, yeah, we love Paterka. He's uh, he's going to be fine. So yeah, just, I think Jay-Z, let's, let's get him off the power play there and, and get tucked back out there. What are we doing? Yeah, there's three or four guys on that roster that I'd put on power play one before Jason Zucker. So I don't know what the hell, what the hell they see in him there. Uh, Chicago's got uh, one of the best power plays in the league so far, which is oh, yeah. what we all expected. They are seventh exactly. uh, with a with six power play goals, a 27.3 percent uh, power play percentage. I, I remember last year. Uh, we were doing a, I was a preview say the same or, thing. Yeah. or a yeah. mock draft, and uh, you and I were doing this, and uh, I said something about how I didn't think the Chicago power play was going to be as bad as people think, and someone in the in the comments just lit me up, like just just was like, "You are so stupid. Uh, <laughs> this 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 power play is going to be garbage," and it was. But I do feel a little vindicated because it's not really that much different. You add what. Tuvo Teravainen, and that's it. Uh, and uh, and uh, they they're one of the best power plays in the league right now. So I don't know. Anyways, I, I thought I'd bring that up. I, I Blake Blake came to my defense uh, in, in the comments. I remember he's just like, "Hey, 
this guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> it was, that was that was funny to me. I mean, a shout out to that YouTube commenter as well. We're not, uh, you know, calling you a dingus or anything like that. But yeah, that comment was that was just a silly comment. You didn't even say like he was like, oh yeah, they're gonna be the best power play in the league. It's like he didn't oh, yeah. say that. I didn't he say that. They're yeah. gonna be better than they were, and you know, yeah. like that's not a hot take. So yeah, I was thinking about that too. Though I was gonna say it if you didn't. Like, who's laughing now? That's okay. right. Number That's one right. in the league or my, top echelon. This is Let's my go. Ross Colton moment. Holy this is my buddy. Ross Colton is Let's the Chicago go. power play. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyways, they got Tara Vine and Foligno, Connor Bedard, Tyler Bertuzzi, Seth Jones on that top power play. Um, Bertuzzi, 13% rostered. Foligno, 8%. Uh, those are guys that I would I would consider taking a look at because they've, mm-hmm. they've kind of uh, – they've been reaping the benefits of playing on that top power play. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, other than that, Tara Vinen, I think, is over 50% rostered. He's getting all the Bedard exposure. So um, I, I think if people are taking notice of that, and then obviously Bedard and, and Seth Jones are, are, are... Seth Jones has been so good this year, uh, at least offensively. Um, I've, I've been really stoked on Seth Jones. I don't know. What do you think, man? Oh, yeah. It's been great. And where we where we got him for, for picks, like, you know, it's happening the way that we hoped, right? Um, yeah. I did see Nate tweeted out today, too, though, that um, Alex the Pickle, Vlasic, um, he took a couple shifts on power play one there in the last game. So just something to keep an eye on uh, in Chicago. Like, please don't take Seth Jones off the power play, yeah, right? You because, you know, uh, Nate was saying this, and I agree. It's like, it's not like Vlasic is all of a sudden going to be this great asset, but it's going to kill our Seth Jones stocks. We don't need that. So, um, yeah, I just something to keep an eye on. It's, you know, we're not doing anything with that information, but just just keep an eye on that. And, you know, it might cap some of Seth Jones ceiling if they actually decide to do that. Would they? Could they? I hope not. <laughs> All right, let's let's go to uh, Columbus. We did talk a little bit about Columbus uh, before, but uh, they've looked really solid as well. Their top power play right now is Cole Sillinger, Sean Monahan, Kirill Marchenko, who got up there now that Ken Johnson is is on. Uh, I don't know if he's on the IR, but he's out for sure. Uh, yeah. Igor Chinnikov, Zach Wierenski, and that unit's been pretty good as mm-hmm. well. Like that's another yeah. one where uh, they're surprisingly. Uh, pretty solid. Ah, not actually not as good as I thought. They they have three power play goals, but uh, they're uh, yeah. Anyways, at five v five, these guys have been have been kind of killing it, and uh, yeah, I I like that unit. It's loaded up. Um, that's kind of what we wanted from Columbus. They're they're staying consistent. Dean Evason uh, is not itchy. He's he's sticking. He's trying to get some chemistry for this team. Uh, and I mean it's tough. They they've had people dropping like flies uh like this season it's it's not been great but um they're 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 chugging along uh and evison is is doing a good job so far so i don't know man uh, are you are you interested in any of these guys uh on the columbus top power play here yeah absolutely marchenko monahan um chinikov all guys i'm very interested in cylinder is a weird one um obviously he's got the coach's confidence there because he's getting some decent deployment but where's adam fantilli what, why, you know, like we have so many injuries and we still can't get Fantilli on the top power play. That is a bit frustrating, right? Cause that's, I mean, we called Fantilli for a really nice breakout this year and I it just don't think it can happen unless he has some consistent power play one time. So yeah, it's, we'll, we'll see how that goes, but I mean, keep an eye on cylinder. I'm just looking him up here. Like, yeah, 19 minutes a night. That's not bad. The metrics are okay. He's got four points in six games, but Fantilli. He's still there. Just get him on the thing. I don't know. You know, we don't know the inner workings of these, you know, these dressing rooms and how they're kind of sorting out the power plays, but I'd love to see Fantilli on there instead of Sillinger. Yeah. Uh, all right. We'll try and burn through the rest of these here. So, so Detroit, uh, we've got uh, Debrinkit back up on the top power play. Uh, JT Comfer, get him the fuck out of here. Uh, Eric Gustafson quarterbacking it as well. He's been back in the lineup. So uh, they've got they've got that top unit loaded up. Haven't really been getting a ton of opportunity. Again, uh, like we said, they had 10 shots last game. So uh, hopefully they they get a little bit more more t- uh, power play time and draw some more penalties. Edmonton, this is the one we wanted to talk about most here because it's the most interesting situation. At practice today, they'd split the power plays. They had Arvidsson, Skinner, McDavid, Dreisaitl, and then a rotation of Matthias Ekholm and Evan Bouchard on one unit. And then they had Hyman, RNH, Adam Henrique, Darnell Nurse, and then Bouchard and Ekholm uh, rotating in that last spot there. 
What do we think about this, Blake? Uh, it's wild. Uh, I, I, I'm concerned about my Zach Hyman shares right now. Yeah. I mean, that was one thing that we talked about Hyman a lot. We're like, yeah, well, he's still power play one. He's still doing the thing. Big time minutes, like over 20 minutes, shots, chuck and pucks. All that stuff is good for Hyman. But now if you're taking him off power play one, like even like I just don't see a situation where they're going to split power play in Edmonton. When you have uh, McDavid and Dreisaitl, you get them out for 75% of that power play. That's irresponsible to not do that. Like that's, yeah. that's you know, that makes no sense. So that means Hyman and RNH and potentially Bouchard are going to get minimized to some degree on the power play. Damn. Um, I, I really think this is a little bit of a Hail Mary just because Edmonton, yeah, they, they just can't put it together. That was a crushing loss for them uh, the other night there against Carolina because yeah. they played well. They had, you know, Freddie Anderson played out of his mind in overtime. And, and it's just, it's been a tough luck uh, start to the season for Edmonton, just like last year. But I think they're playing a little better than they were last year. Like their, their expected goals are decent. But their their puck luck is the worst in the league, and you know, like some of the, their save percentage terrible as well. Like it's just it's just not going well for the Oilers right now. So they got to do something, and this is kind of the hail mary that they're doing. I would be surprised if this lasts more than half a game. You know what I mean? Like yeah. unless like out of nowhere these guys just pop off for like you know two goals in quick succession succession on two power plays, and you're like. Okay, maybe we have something here. But fun fact, I've got Ekholm in, you know, so many different leagues. So if they're going to give him power play one with McDavid, buddy, I'm loving life. I mean, because I love Ekholm already as just kind of a supplementary guy on your squad. But if, if if like, his his ceiling definitely rises, this is a guy that can do stuff for fantasy. So keep an eye on it. Obviously, Skinner and Arvidsson to the moon if, if that lasts. Like, I, I called, you know, for Arvidsson to be more valuable than Skinner this year, and that hasn't really panned out. Skinner has still been shooting the lights out with really minimal uh, ice time. So if they're going to put him on power play one, I think, yeah, Skinner could could get the biz with McDavid and Dry there. And and I like Arvidsson as a power play performer as well. So it makes sense. It's just shocking. That's all. Yeah, it's a little – well, I mean, their power play has been bad. They're, uh, they've, they're 28th in the league. They only have two power play goals uh which is crazy, crazy. but yeah. but you'd think like they've had the same unit essentially for two straight years and they've been killing it like you'd think that that uh you maybe just stick stick with it and and hopefully you figure it out but uh, maybe teams know how yeah. to game plan for it better now maybe like, yeah maybe yeah. they do they, they gotta do um, something yeah so it, it's interesting uh i definitely feel good about my about any at home arvidson skinner shares jeff skinner's been really good yeah uh, i good. really like the look of him he's been one of the, one of the best players on that team so far this year so uh our, and hopefully arvidson gets sparked uh by getting some mcdavid dry sidle exposure here um speaking of split power plays the new york islanders uh they lost anthony to claire and they just blew up their power plays Why absolutely Threw a bomb in there. Patrick Waugh, not happy. Split up Horvat and Barzell. So they've got one unit that's Horvat, JGP, Anders Lee, Palmieri, and Noah Dobson, which was their top unit. Uh, and then Matt Barzell, Maxim Siplikov, Brock Nelson, Simon Holmstrom, and Mike Riley. Ugh. What is going on there? I, I don't like that at all. Uh, personally, what I'd probably do is go Barzell, Horvat, Nelson, Palmieri, Dobson. Um, but uh, Patrick Waugh disagrees. I don't know, man. I'm I'm a little concerned. I, I mean, I, I invested in Barzal. I know I gave you a hard time. Uh, in the off season about Matt Barzal and and your your all three zones stuff, and I once I did my projection on him, I'm like, oh, actually, this is this came out a lot a lot higher than I thought, and I ended up picking him up in a couple spots, but it hasn't been good so far. Yeah, and this this makes it look a lot worse. Yeah, it's not great for Barzal, but again, this is this is just a bit of a knee jerk reaction, right? They, they need to get something going. This is one of those things where they try it for a game, or maybe even half a game, then they go back to old faithful, right? That there's no way they can do this. Like Barzal is by far their best player. He generates all the offense on the team. Like everything runs through him on this team. So you're going to throw him on power play two. Like I think maybe the thought there is not that Barzal is playing bad and we're going to put him to power play two. It's like let's get our best offensive play driver on the second power play to try and get some of these guys 
guys cooking, you know, but yeah. splitting him and Horvat up, that uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Right. I think they have good chemistry. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see Patrick Waugh. He's, he's a bit of an odd duck there. Um, you know, he's playing the guys that I want, right. He's playing Barzell for 20 minutes. So that's nice. Horvat's getting big ice time, but you know, he's doing some weird stuff. Like I remember at the end of last year, he was putting Mike Riley over Noah Dobson on the power play. He played, um, yeah. you know, Semyon Varlamov over Sorokin towards yeah. the end of the season. It's like, uh, you know, what are you doing? Is he just flexing, right? Like, you know, it's it's weird stuff, but, you know, he's a head coach and I'm some guy in my basement, so I don't know what's going on. But yeah, Barzell, he's going to be fine. I bet this doesn't last for more than a game. Yeah, I hope so. Um, just, uh, we'll, we'll kind of, uh, I'll give you three names here just to finish off the power play planner here. Uh, we've got Hagel uh, up on power play one, replacing Darren, Darren Radish. We've got Connor Garland uh, on power play one, replacing Jake DeBrusque in Vancouver. And then Pavel Dorofiev up for Victor Olofsson with him being out. Uh, how do you rank these three guys here, Blake? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, you got to go Hagel, Garland, Dorofiev to me. Um, yeah. And Hagel, I'm putting Hagel to top, not because of the, like, He's on and off power play one, so I'm not super confident that he stays there, but he doesn't need it. His line yeah. is like he's the better even strength player in terms of conversion, yeah. it just in terms of, of deployment. Hagel is going to bring more to the table there. And and it, the fact that he's on power play one, that's icing, right? But Garland, this guy is the Canucks best player on a nightly basis. It's insane. It's just he just he's not a great finisher, right? But he, he's he makes things happen like his five on five uh five v five coursey four percentage when he's out there this guy crushes there he just he's a dog on the puck he's amazing in puck battles in the corner he gets the puck to these guys great skater i, I he's just small if this guy was like six foot tall he'd be like in the upper echelon of the league he's he's that good it's just yeah he's he's doing a lot with very little so i like uh connor garland a lot and power play one he's totally earned that drophy have really nice piece there vegas is to me overachieving but who yeah. the hell cares like you know yeah, get strike while the iron's hot drophy is getting a, a good look there mark stone what is mark stone doing this year just making me look like an absolute ding dong uh and that's fine you know it's like i read this tweet on mark stone like two years ago it was like yeah it sounds like mark stone's gonna be in and out of the lineup for the rest of his career with this chronic back injury i'm like okay that's enough i don't need mark yeah. stone in my life screw that he doesn't shoot he doesn't generate chances well what the hell is this like he's just gonna he's just gonna plow through 82 games this year and crush it for like 90 points like is, is that what's happening now yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, it's, I mean, it's still early, right? Last year he was he was pretty solid too, not to this level, uh, but then had I mean ruptured his spleen, so maybe he uh, gets some sort of ulcer in his intestines or something. And <laughs> you got to air quote that ruptured his spleen. Right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. No, it's, he probably did. It's interesting the amount of catastrophic injuries that that uh, seem to be uh, like. Uh, he's a magnet for these these very weird and strange injuries. Um, it, it seems a little fishy to me. Yeah, very uh, consistent Dorofiev, healing, though, isn't he? Yeah, I, I mean, so so Vegas was a team uh, that I've been I've been targeting since the beginning of the year, just because they lost so much wing depth that there there was going to be opportunity for at least one to two wingers uh, yeah. high in the lineup. So Victor Olsson is a guy that I was looking at before the season. Dorofiev's another. Alexander Holtz. Uh, these young guys that haven't really gotten a ton of opportunity that are getting opportunity. Dorofiev's getting it right now. He has four points in his last five games. Yeah. Um, time on ice, not great. Uh, just over 15 minutes. Shots per 60 rank over the last five games, 38th in the league. Um, so he's actually been uh, been doing some stuff. He's he's looked pretty solid with uh, with Tomas Hurdle. Um, they've they've got something cooking there on the second line and on the power play. So um, I that's that's a guy that I'm a little more interested in uh, than I thought, uh, to be honest. Now looking at looking at the numbers, so uh, How are you ranking definitely. Them? Uh, I probably am still still ranking them the same way you did. Uh, I don't think it's a fair comparison, really. Uh, Hagel is definitely the best uh, player in a vacuum. Connor Garland's been really good, and I think I, I like the Vancouver power play more than uh, the Vegas power play. But Dorofiev is a guy that I'm... Uh, it, Garland and Dorofiev are closer than than mm -hmm. uh, than you'd think. So, uh, yeah. But I do like Connor Garland, too. He's He's been really solid. And and getting the, the Pedersen exposure, too. Um, I think that's something that's been long overdue. Pedersen's getting the Garland exposure.
that's right yeah <laughs> that's yeah. what's happening that is, yeah that's right yeah no it, it is kind of that that is what it feels like right now uh let's go to from zero to hero We're, we'll just touch on some zero g targets before we get into the mailbag um we've got uh uh we've got the calgary goalies uh getting the tandem treatment uh Dustin Wolf, 45% rostered. Uh, kind of, everyone kind of feeling, and I, I thought so too, that he'd get some volume this year. But it's been a straight tandem with Vladar, with, with uh, Dan Vladar. Wolf has better numbers, uh, but Dan Vladar only 7% rostered uh, and uh, has not lost in regulation yet. So interesting. Uh, that's a guy that I would I would take a close look at. I I do think Wolf is is the is probably the one a and the and the guy of the future but um they made it clear before the season uh shortly before things started that it was going to be a battle between these two so mm -hmm. and and so far um there's been no reason for one to to pull away from the other so it's interesting to see the roster ship disparity in yahoo because they're they're both really getting the same amount of playing time so um lucas dostal getting the volume treatment right now with Gibson out 37% rostered. He's been incredible. Uh, yeah. Dostal has been, has been keeping the ducks in it and, uh, and they've been overachieving a little, like slightly, not, not a ton. Like they're, it's not like they've been amazing. I think they've played the sharks twice. So that, that definitely helps. But, um, Dostal has, has looked very, very solid. And I think even when Gibson comes back, he's probably going to get a little more volume. Uh, so 37% roster. That's a guy that I'd be snapping up pretty quick. Uh, in Vancouver, Lankinen and she loves Lankinen has had what three straight starts now. Is that right? Blake? Yeah. Uh, and has looked really good. I saw you picked him up in one of the leagues that we're in together. Uh, what are your thoughts on Kevin Lankinen here? Yeah, I mean, I, I just read a report today as well that um, it's still going to be a little ways for Demco, right? So these are the guys we're riding with here in Vancouver, and it's a decent environment, right? They had a bad start, but yeah, they have slowly kind of come around here. And I, I think Lankanen is, yeah, three starts. That's enough for me to see. Like, I thought Shilovs was going to be the guy, but he didn't perform the way Lankanen is. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm picked him up everywhere I could, even in this poor week like he's like i said they only have four games uh up till the end of next week so it's not a great schedule stream to get lankin in but i do think that he's gonna get you know two starts for sure probably three of those four games and uh you know vancouver has a better schedule moving forward in the season they've got lots of off nights i just we don't know anything about demco so i really don't think they're gonna ride with the tandem like they, they've already shown they played this guy three in a row and he's been playing amazing so yeah lankin is the guy there yeah um uh, i'm Okay, so Charlie Lindgren, 36% rostered. Um, again, a little bit weird in terms of the rostership disparity with him and Logan Thompson. Logan Thompson's the bigger name, I think, just because he played in Vegas and maybe got a little bit more more exposure uh, in terms of people people viewing uh, Logan Thompson. He was a big story a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but him and Lindgren are playing the same amount. And, and Washington's been surprisingly actually pretty decent. Uh, yeah. so far this year so um so they're getting uh the tandem treatment but Lindgren is the guy that's a little bit more available so that's a guy you could look at um Urson and Fedotov also getting the, the the tandem treatment Philly's been struggling a little bit but I I do think that there might be some value there Dave Riddick 20 percent rostered um we'll see when Kemper comes back but for right now he's getting volume so that's a guy that I would I would take a close look at as well Peter Morazic still getting volume. Joel Hofer, um, they're probably, I, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, Biddington lost the game last night. So we'll see uh, if they lean a little bit more towards, towards Joel Hofer because he did get a couple starts in a row. Looked, looked really good. Uh, and uh, that's a guy that I would be, that's a situation at the very least that I would be watching very carefully because uh, St. Louis is interesting. I like they're they can't decide whether they're rebuilding, retooling, yep. or going for it. Uh, so so I think that if they if they get a hot hand, they're probably gonna ride ride them. So and right now Joel Hofer seems to be a little bit hotter than Bennington. So I don't know. What do you think about that situation, Blake? Yeah, it's just one of those things. Who gets the next start, right? If they go to Hofer after one Bennington start, like yeah, I'm I I'm think a spec ad is probably where you want to go. I've, I added Hofer in two spots just to get one start to try and win um, a matchup. And he actually helped me win one matchup. Just Joel Hofer by himself yeah. uh, took me over the, the top in a cats league. 
But I held him because, yeah, I want to see what's going on here. I think that's a very real possibility. It does stink, though, in St. Louis. Robert Thomas, Matchbox 20. He went down. Uh, he's got a fractured ankle. He's going to be reevaluated in six weeks. So that's not going to be great for that team. They're already, you know, pretty like they're already overachieving. They're already a team based uh, on efficiency. And now they lost their best pivot, right? Their best player, most likely. So it's going to be tough times there in St. Louis. So, I mean, the environment might not be great for Hofer, but I think he has a real good shot at kind of taking the the crease for a little bit here and, and having some value for a couple weeks. Uh, a few other names here. Peter Morazic, uh getting getting volume in Chicago, seventeen percent rostered. Still a guy that you could that has some some value in a lot of leagues. Uh, Devin Levi. Uh, it seems like they're going with a with a tandem again in Buffalo. Uh, he's only twelve percent rostered, so that's a guy that that could hold a little bit of value. Nedeljkovic. It seems like maybe they're going with him right now. Uh, so he's nine percent rostered. Uh, if you are interested and you're desperate. Uh, that's a guy that you could look at. Alex Lyon uh, looking really good, but again, that environment in Detroit is is a lot worse than people think it is. Uh, so I, I'm not super excited about that, but that's a guy that is going to get volume in terms of shots on net and uh, potentially uh, starts as well. So um, he he seems to be he's the he's the one that's performed the best by far. Uh, out of all the Detroit goaltenders, so um, yeah, I, I I like Alex Lyon at least um, a little bit there, and then Daniil Tarasov. That's a guy that that has not been touched on very much. Uh, Merzlikens is out with injury right now, so Tarasov getting the volume treatment. He's only four percent rostered, and uh, I mean looked pretty good last night against the Leafs. Mm -hmm. um, that's a guy that I think will take the starting job at some point this year. Uh, whether it's Elvis gets traded or he just stays injured or whatever. Um, I, it doesn't seem like they're happy with Merzlikens at all in that situation and vice versa. So I think Danil Tarasov is a guy to watch closely, especially if Columbus keeps playing the way that they do or the way that they are playing right now. So um, yeah, 4% uh, rostered. He is available almost everywhere. So that that's a guy uh, to look very closely at. Let's go to Hutch versus uh my oh man i had a tough first week I, i'm gonna be <laughs> honest i mulled over uh taking lucas dostal or tristan jari and i went with jari and i picked wrong uh Whoopsie very doodle. much so uh he that night he played and played i think one period of hockey and allowed four goals and uh didn't play again and not good and and honestly uh Gugsy picked Sam Urson who wasn't fantastic either uh but he was better than Jari so it, yeah I didn't even look at the scores I knew I lost so I'm 0-1 uh Blake who uh, let, let's look at Blake's take here who are okay. you taking so before we do this uh, maybe I misunderstood the contest so what is the what is the uh from when to when and we're looking at okay goalies. so it, it's from tonight so Wednesday until yep. next Tuesday. Oh God. Okay. Now, now it's you're gonna make week. me do. That. Okay. Why don't you let oh, me look okay. this up? You do yours first, I'll, and then I'll, I'll, I'll... okay. I'll give you. I'll give you mine then. So mine is. This is a tough one, just because of the way that the schedule is laid out. Um, I'm going with Ivan Fedotov, which is a little. Oh my. Risky. Um, but just just because of the way um, that Philly is deploying their goaltenders right now, they have four games uh, over this next week. Uh, one of the only teams that do them in San Jose, which I mean, doesn't get much worse in terms of in terms of uh, team situation. Uh, but but Ivan Fedotov has not been great so far, but he is getting the Washington Capitals tonight. Uh, it's the second half of a back to back. They played them last night. And I'm banking on the Flyers coming out and and getting some revenge against the Caps here. I think it's about time that the Caps lose a game. They're going to put Fedotov in. Um, and then if they stick with the straight tandem here, uh, the next game that Fedotov would get is the Montreal Canadiens on Sunday. So in terms of, uh, uh, of team situation and opponent situation, uh, uh, opponent difficulty. I'm going with Fedotov. I'm hoping that he he figures it out here, um, and the Flyers kind of kind of get a little bit more than they deserve. Montreal's been really bad too. They've been way oh, overachieving. Yeah. Um, so I, I I like Philly in that matchup. So 
Um, yeah, Fedotov's who I'm going with. It doesn't feel good, but uh, it's uh, in terms of uh, looking at the schedule, that's probably the, as good as it's going to get. So uh, what do you think, Blake? Who are you risky, taking? Risky, bisky. Okay, I'm, I feel good about this. Um, I'm taking Eustace Ananen, all right? Justice for Eustace, all right? I think he's going to get two of the three games here. Colorado, They we know that uh, Ananen's going to play on Thursday against Utah. Then there's a back-to-back Sunday, Monday. So, I mean, does Georgie get Ottawa and then Eustace gets Chicago? Bang. I like those two matchups as well. And obviously, I feel much better about Colorado than I than I would in Philly, right? Yeah. Um, but I I don't know. I, I like the I like the acumen of Fedotov as well, but he's he's not played very well this year. So um yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, we're getting two games each, right? So I think it's kind of a crapshoot, but I like Annan in here because I like the avalanche a little bit better. So there you go. Shout out to Eustace. Yeah, I think that's probably the pick. To be honest, that's, uh, I, I I probably made a made a made a terrible mistake. Oh that top, no, but that's okay. You just spot me right. a lead. Okay, you're like the Flash, like or, or no, what's that guy's name in the baseball game? The Freeze or whatever. Like he gives. Oh the yeah, and then he just smashes past them. That is that is such a fascinating. Yeah. Like who is that guy? I don't he's, know. He's just in one of those morph suits, like the green guys. Uh, the the green guys that used to come and sit behind the penalty box at Canucks games. Oh yeah, and yeah. then he just they get he they give people like a, an insane head start to run around the field, yeah. and he beats them every they time. Just he's, cooks, he's, they just cooks them. Yeah, I I there's that one that one video that I've seen so many times of the guy that thinks he's gonna win, and he's yeah. like literally like like he's he's waving to the crowd. He's like he's like. Yeah, <laughs> Get, getting everyone hyped up, and then the guy passes him, and he falls on his face. It was yeah. it was un- unbelievable. Right before the finish line, um, it's that, that's that's a, you. So you're the so you're the freeze. That's kind of what I'm getting at. You're spotting me. You're you're giving me a false sense of confidence, oh, and then you're just gonna blow by. All right, that's the reference. I, I used to be fast. I used to do the 200 meter uh, oh back God. in high school, uh, but uh, not anymore. I've oh. I've gained copious amounts of weight since then okay and, well you still uh, got those long dancers legs so that's you know yeah that you know what that was that was a big a big thing uh people didn't expect me to be fast because i was tall and lanky but then i i could i could move move my legs pretty fast and the strides were usually longer than than, than other people yeah. so that, we're gonna have to meet up and uh and have a race all right sprinting is my yeah. thing all right anything longer than 10 Ooh. seconds i'm done all right but oh, i'm an gotcha. explosive athlete all right as you can all tell if you're watching youtube all right that's that's how we get the biz over here yeah, well, I'm in horrendous shape, so that should oh, go God. really well. No, no, I'm with you as well. <laughs> that, that's that's Our, part of the fun. Yeah, that's right. That's right. A couple of old dads racing each other. It's good. It's yeah. good. With um, asthma, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ivan Fedotov versus Eustace Annan. We will see how this plays out next week. Let's go to the hockey hotline. We are friggin' popping off that's, in terms of the fault, Discord buddy. questions. Uh, we're not we're not going to be able to to get to all of these questions because uh, we've had so many. Um, but I'm going to go to the chat first, just because we have been uh, we have been getting some good questions over here. Matthew Popkin says, "Gentlemen, great content as always." Question: I went to buy low on Zach Hyman and offered Timo Meyer straight up. He countered with Zach Hyman and Nason for Meyer and Norris. Should I take it? Thanks. I would say absolutely not. Uh, what do you think, buddy? Uh, hmm. I don't know. I, th- I think that looks a little better to me. I mean, Norris is still a guy like, yeah, he's power play one right now. But he, again, he's a guy based on efficiency, blah, blah, blah. Meyer is not even on power play one right now. Neither is Hyman. All right. As we've detailed. But uh, oh, I mean, if it was I, I, I might do it if you got a different player than Nason. I would take Nason yes. out there and maybe yeah. get someone who's a little more established. I don't think I would do that one as is, but I think I would work with it, right? Like Meyer and Norris, I don't have a problem getting off them for Hyman and maybe a better roster player. That's the concern for me is Nason because I, I do think that he, you're kind of just trading for a streamer. Uh, mm-hmm. So it ends up like Nason is just kind of like a, a, a distraction. Um, yeah. Whereas, so it's really Meyer and Norris for, for Zach Hyman. And I think Meyer and Hyman are probably closer than than people think. Uh, in terms of in terms of their value, so I'm I I just am pretty high on Josh Norris, so I I think that I would probably want a little bit more out of the Hyman side for sure. Um, um, Manso says, my boy Key for oh, Sherwood. Uh, what are your thoughts on Sherwood, buddy? Oh, first off, this guy Manso's a dang legend, buddy. 
Thanks for being here. Uh, Kiefer Sherwood, this guy is must roster in a bangers league. There's no question. He has 31 hits in three games. That's obscene. He's leading the NHL. And I feel like uh, he's being told to go do that. Like, like they're letting yeah. the leash off. And it's like, okay, you go nuts, buddy. You go out there, like just get the business. And he's crushing people. So yeah, I picked him up in both my bangers leagues. This, this guy is uber valuable. He's showing on Yahoo ranked as like the 40th ranked player in both spots. So clearly a valuable guy. He's putting some points on the board. Canucks third line, pretty decent. Danton Heinen, Sherwood, and Teddy Bluger, they're doing the thing. So, I mean, don't expect the offense to keep going, but definitely expect the hits. This guy's a beast. Uh, Lost Ones asked about the Oilers power play. We did touch on that. Armin Safari, uh, just uh, uh, just to confirm, asks, so when Cats, Ananen, but long-term Ananen or Sam Snub, I'd still go with Ananen. Uh, Sam Snob, I think, uh, is, is still in a battle with Aiden Hill and Annan. And I think, uh, Georgiev, there's been a long history now of him really struggling, um, more than Aiden Hill. Aiden Hill's just had a tough start to the year a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I still think Annan is, is the guy to go with long term. Uh, this is a question about Jamie Ben. Uh, we, you did touch on Jamie Ben already. That's from Ian. Um, G Horn. Uh, would you trade Tage and Kadri for Aho and Hyman? Cats, Pims, Bangers. Ah, uh, yeah, I think I would. I think I would go with Aho Hyman uh, yeah. for Tage and Kadri. What do you yeah, think, man? I think the Aho Aho Hyman side is is stronger. So yeah, yeah, and I love Tage, but Kadri, you know, Calgary's overachieved big time at the start of the year here as well. I mean, I don't think that that's real, but they've had a great start. Yeah. Give me Aho and Hyman. Aho is flying out there right now, and he's he's yeah. really one of the only safe guys you can get on that team. And then I, I still believe in Hyman. I really do. And when you make a trade, too, it's good to think about, like, it doesn't matter what the previous uh, production was. Your production starts when you get the player, right? Yep. So if he, if he has, like, 70 points in 60 games or whatever, that's a, that's a massive dub for you. So it doesn't matter what he's done at this point, just uh, what he's going to do for you. Uh, another question about the power play in Edmonton from Matthew Popkin. Uh, Jordan uh, asks, uh, hey, just tuned in, but would you consider Konechny a buy low? Would you trade Jared McCann for him? That's an interesting question, Blake. What do you think about that? Yes. Yes, I would. Um, yes, I would, Kent. Um, I would definitely trade McCann for Konechny. It's not a it's not a slam dunk by any means. McCann has a – I think he has 70-point upside, but I'm concerned about the deployment for Jared McCann. He's a great player, but they're already dicking him around a little bit in Seattle. Like, yeah, he's getting power play one, but, you know, his even strength ice time is all over the place. I, I just feel like um, Konechny is a much safer fantasy option. He has shorthanded points. Like, he's great at that. Like, he'll get a bunch of shorthanded goals, and he's going to do better on the power play. He's He's – I, I just like Konechny better as a player. He brings more to the table. Um, but McCann is maybe the better offensive player, but he's just not getting the minutes. So, yeah, I'd, I'd go. I think Konechny is a little bit of a buy load just because of the narrative surrounding Philadelphia and just the poor start they've had. I think Konechny is going to be fine. So, yeah, I'd do that one. Yeah, for sure. I 100% I agree. I'm really high on Konechny. Um, he's still getting 20 minutes time on ice right now. Uh, in, in terms of underlying stats, He's got three points in in his last five games, uh, but in the, over the last five games, 60th in the league in individual scoring chances for per 60 at 5v5. Um, so I like that a lot. I I, I think so highly of Konechny, so it, definitely I, I would I would do that deal. Um, last question from the chat here, uh, at least until we get more. Uh, e asks, Robert Tom Thomas out six weeks with a fractured ankle. I'm trying to trade Genther for Horvat. Thoughts? I would say I try to shoot a little higher than Bo Horvat if you're if you're giving up Dylan Genther. Horvat, uh, like like I said, uh, we we talked about the Islanders power play and how it, how they're really messing around with it now that Duclair is out. They're they're taking Horvat away from from Matt Barzell. I don't like that at all. I don't. That's that's concerning to me. And Dylan Genther, I think there is enough aura around him right now that you could probably shoot a little bit higher uh, than Bo Horvat. I don't know. What do you what do you think about that, Blake? Yep, yeah, pretty much. I mean, if if that trade did happen, I think Horvat is probably the better side, but um Genther has a much higher ceiling which we know so you're lo you're losing some ceiling there for a floor play so I'm with you man I'd, I'd aim a little higher see what you can do Genther still has a bit of a bit of a name value and you know he he had a really low time on ice in his last game but the game before that he played 20 minutes so it's, it's we're still trying to figure out what we have here in Dylan Genther I think what it is is like the at even strength the Dylan Genther line they're they're just not very good defensively 
right? So yeah. they're not getting put out there in a lot of situations, but the power play time is all his, no problem. I think he has a higher ceiling. Aim higher. So our first question from the Discord is actually along the same lines. Uh, it's from Matt, Matt D., uh, he says, what caliber players would you consider trading Dylan Genther for? I want to hold, I want to hold him, but everyone in my league is huge on him. I got offered a one for one. Also him for Stamkos. I would yeah. definitely, uh, trade, trade, uh, Genther for Stamkos at this point. I think Genther's ceiling, uh, is probably, uh, Stamkos's floor. I don't know. I don't know what you, what you feel about that. Yeah. Um, that, Blake, that makes sense. That's, that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. Yeah, I mean, you're you're thinking like 70 points for Ganther ceiling most likely this year. 70 point floor for Stamkos is probably what, where we're living. So if you got that on the table, you smash it and you run away. Yeah, yeah, I 100 percent agree. Uh, Beaver 88 asks, is Konechny worth worth it to hang on to points only? Yeah, I I, I mean, we talked about that already. Uh, Konechny, I think, is is still getting tons of ice time. Uh, has had a little bit of bad luck in terms of conversion, but I I still am super high on Travis Konechny. Um Koo asks, points only, is Bofus worth holding? Very deep at defense. Uh, others available are Riker Evans and Eric Gustafson. Would you take either of those guys over, over bulk fist at this point? Oh, God. Um, I, first off, I'm not very interested in bulk fist. I think, no. yeah, he's, he's not someone that I'm interested in holding because of the insanely low ice time. I mean, maybe Riker Evans, uh, Gustafson is basically bulk fist, right? If Gustafson had a 13 minute night the other day too, with Detroit. So neither of those guys is exciting. Sure. Power play one. It's not all it's cracked up to be, right? They're not getting any other ice time to to accrue any of those stats. So maybe Riker Evans, but that's not exciting either. Like, although he has three points in the last four games, well done, Mr. Evans. But uh, yeah, I think you can drop both fists and not be too worried about it. Uh, Rico in the chat asks, Adam Fox for Timo Meyer. This is an interesting one. I think in points only leagues, I'm probably sticking with Fox because their points output is probably going to be pretty similar. Uh, but Timo, if there's any bangers waiting or shots waiting, uh, I'd probably do that deal. I'd probably try and get Timo Meyer for, for Adam Fox. I think Fox is a little bit overrated in those type of leagues. Mm. Doesn't really do a ton. Uh, doesn't shoot a lot. Blocks a good decent amount but not crazy doesn't hit at all um really gets a lot a lot of production on the power play um but yeah timo meyer i think um he hits a ton shoots a ton is going to get lots of ice time more than he did last year at least um he kind of got demoted a little bit but now is still still playing with uh nico he 5v5 and is back up on uh is he on the top power play again maybe not. i thought he was moved off and they had nason there but yeah maybe that. nason's there but but meyer is producing 5v5 uh has has been doing yep. pretty well so so i i'd still i'd still probably probably go for that i don't know about you man yeah, it depends. I mean, I feel like it, like how big is your league? Like how many teams, right? Like to me, defense is like guys like Fox, they aren't that common, right? You, you got a, maybe a point per game defenseman there. I, I'm, I'd probably be more interested in holding on to Fox there. But like you said, if there's banger waiting and, you know, if there's significant banger waiting, now we're cooking. Now we're like, yep, for sure. But I mean, to lose a guy like Fox, I, I, I don't know. I think I'd probably stick with the Fox side there. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's a fair take. Um, another question from the Discord. We've got uh, Zudo asking, what are your thoughts on Pavel Zaka so far? He's looking like a drop in my 12-team home league. Uh, just looked at his underlying stats a little bit. They're not good. Um, he's getting 19 minutes time on ice, which is great. Still getting power play one deployment. Uh, not looking great. Shots per 60, 88th in the league. That's not bad. Individual scoring chances for per 60, 182nd. On ace numbers are terrible. Uh Two, 290th in Corsi 4 per 60 and 248th in scoring chances 4 per 60 at 5v5 uh, and has just two points in seven games, zero in his last five games. Boston has not looked very good uh, mm -hmm. overall. Um, they are, and actually we just got another another question about Zaka in the chat. Is Zaka a drop, demoted to line three, but still power play one? Uh, yeah, I mean, even when he was on the top line, wasn't really producing a ton and that top line has not looked very good so uh yeah i think zaka probably is a drop at this what do you think blake yeah zaka is just a guy that we were interested in because of his access to pasternak and that already hasn't gone well and if he's getting moved away from pasternak 
I mean, the, the writing's on the wall. I think you can punt this guy. And, uh, you know, if you might be able to pick him up later, no one's going to be rushing to the wire to grab. Yeah, for sure. Steezy asks, uh, we know the potential of Velarde for streaming, but it is not bringing joy to use a roster spot on what he's contributed thus far. In a deep league, 15 teams, points league, is it worth it to drop him for someone like Heedle or Pinto despite a drop in minutes relative to Velarde? That's an interesting question. Gabe Velarde has not been good uh, so far. Um, I just got to, oh, you know what? It's Gabriel Velarde. Let me just pull up his stats here uh oh I, I don't know how to spell his name blake i got you <laughs> yeah oh yeah I mean, okay so three assists in six games so far two assists in the last five um underlying stats not great like in terms of his on ice stats pretty solid 65th in course four per 60 score score inches for 60 75th mm -hmm. um his individual scoring chance is 4 per 60, 149th. That's not bad. Shots per 60, not good. 345th. Uh, and, uh, yeah, still getting power play one, still getting line one, but really not doing a lot. Uh, when he's not converting, there's not a lot to like there. Um, but, yeah, it's still getting the exposure to Connor and Shifley um, and exposure to Ehlers on power play one. So, I, I don't know, man. What are, what are your thoughts on Velarde? This is a this has been a tough one for me. I do have yeah. him in one league that's not as deep as that. Um, I think I think in a league that deep, you're probably still hanging on for a little bit longer uh, until there's like a change in deployment. But uh, in shallower leagues, it's it's a little more interesting. What do you think about Velarde here? Yeah, in, in a 15 teamer, I think you have to hold Velarde. Like you're not, you can't just drop a power play one line one guy, right? Um, but the thing is, like we have to manage expectations here. And Velarde is his role on that line with Connor and Shifley is to forecheck, right? To forecheck, to win the puck battles, and to get the puck to these guys and let them get the biz, right? Um, where yeah, is on the on the power play as well. He's net front there, so I mean, he's kind of like the Zach Hyman on the Oilers power play or the old Oilers power play. He's not really that involved in the play, right? The other guys are whipping it around and he's just getting in position and tapping in rebounds and things like that. Right. So I don't know. There's not, there's the, the, the ceiling isn't crazy high for Velarde just in general, but yeah, to drop him for someone like Philip Hito or Shane Pinto at this point, I'm not really into that. You know what I mean? Like what's, what's the benefit there? I, I think we, we ride it out a little bit longer with Velarde and see what's what, like, this is a guy that yeah had some, some medical issues last year. Like he's probably, it's it's still so early in the season and Winnipeg's doing really well obviously 6 and 0 like they can afford Velarde to sort of find his game a little bit here and I, and I think he will eventually and they're they're still trotting him out so as long as they're doing that I'm still on board with Velarde yeah i think i i think i'm with you there dry saddle ass uh are we dropping tristan jari like last week's turkey dinner absolutely yes at this point, I don't think there's any question about that. He seems to be third on the depth chart right now in uh, in in Pittsburgh, and I'm not really liking any of those goalies right now. So yeah, Jari Jari definitely is a drop at this point. Agent Orange uh, asks: Is Alex Lyon the too early to tell zero G candidate of the year, or is it Lukas Dostal, Kevin Lankinen? Lots of great options out there. Wondering which guys you are bullish on right now. Cheers, boys. We kind of did talk about this already. Um, out of those three, I'm probably like Lukas Dostal um just because uh he'll he has more long-term value Re currently mm -hmm. kevin lankinen uh, i i really like alex lyon i do like him uh but i don't like detroit right now so uh what i don't know what do you think man how would you rank these three right now in terms of of zero g heroes of the year yeah, I think that's a great take there. Like, um, Dostal is the interesting season long piece, but again, like with him and Lion, their their team environment is horrendous, right? So yeah. for these guys to be valuable and provide value for your fantasy teams, they have to stand on their head. They have to catch bullets in their teeth, right? That's what these guys do. Whereas Lankinen, he's doing well, but he's also on a good team. Right. So that that's why I'm a little bit more into Lankinen in this case. And yeah, there's there's the looming like Demko coming back and you know she loves is still a good goalie he's a really good goalie and he could take back the crease at some point here so there's a little volatility with Kevin Lankinen but we're talking zero G we're talking about little pockets of value and right now to me I'd be more interested in Kevin Lankinen than the other two yeah I I, I think so too uh, Michael Kesselring this is from J Sports Michael Kesselring looks like he's getting decent time on ice since Jersey went down could he hit 40 points this year with decent peripherals I mean I don't I don't know I'd I, 
don't know enough about Michael Kesslering. I think it's not not been a guy on my radar. He does have three points in his last five games, four points in seven. Um, individual scoring chances four per sixty uh, amongst defensemen at five v five is fifty ninth. That's not bad. Um, and yeah, is getting over twenty minutes time on ice. I mean, I guess maybe in a really deep league you could maybe pick him up. I'm still not really that interested. Uh, in Kessel Ring right now, but uh, I don't know, Blake. What do you think? I, he hasn't been on my radar really at all. Well, he should be, buddy. All right. Well, if what kind of fantasy hockey podcast do we have here for not talking about Michael Kessel Ring? All right. Um, <laughs> the deepest of deep cuts. Yeah, he. It, it is what it is. This, if you're excited about like a fourth defenseman on a team, then yeah, Michael Kessel Ring is good to go. Right. Um, he's having a little stretch here where he's putting some, some points, but that's not what he's known for. He's like. With uh, Dursey out, yeah, this guy's stock is going to go up a little bit, but not the offensive production. Maybe more hits, maybe more blocks, but, I mean, it is what it is. This guy's – I don't even know if he's streamer level at this point. Like, you can't – you know, like, I got to get to the wire and get Michael Kessel ring because of those sweet, <laughs> you know, tw- 20 minutes he's playing. Like, it's it's an interesting player to talk about for now, but, yeah, it's just not a guy I think we're going to be talking about ever again. I, I'm going to try and just pick a couple questions for the Discord. We have so many left, and I, I just don't think that, that we we should go on for too much longer. Uh, but this is great. We are getting, we're getting tons of interest uh, right now and tons of questions. Uh, Skafku27, Mitch Marner thoughts. I thought everything was lining up for him to have a career year. Not so much so far. I haven't hated Mitch Marner's game so far this year. Mm. Um, it, I mean, he's got seven points in his last five games, seven points in seven games so far. So obviously 82 point pace, uh, not what you expect from Mitch Marner. Uh, on ice numbers are incredible. Uh, scoring chances four per 60 fifth in the league right now. Corsi four per 60 is 33rd. I mean, that's what happens when you play with Austin Matthews. Yep. Um, underlying numbers individually are never great for Mitch Marner. Um, but overall, I just I haven't hated Marner's game. Their power play just isn't uh I mean, isn't converting the way that you you expect them to. Um once they figure that out and they will, I'm sure, um, I'm sure Marner's Marner's value is going to to increase. But yeah, I mean, it it's hard to expect a, a huge increase in points for Mitch Marner. Like I think he's a guy that's probably gonna push for a hundred points. Um, but if you're expecting like like 110, 120, like I heard some people say he's going to win the Art Ross this year because it's a contract year or like I, I just don't see that happening. I think he's a guy that's going to hover around 100 points. Uh, he's going to get lots of exposure to Austin Matthews. And uh, I mean, that's that's what you should expect from Mitch Marner. So if you're expecting anything more than that, I think you you were probably mistaken. But I don't know, man. Do you have any thoughts on Marner other than that? No, yeah, not too much. I'm just, I'm still excited about the player. Like Matthews has uh, underachieved, at least in terms of conversion. So once he starts converting, Marner's going to come along with him, right? Because this is, it's like Zaka and Pasternak only, you know, Marner is not Zaka. Marner is like an elite offensive player. So I, I think it's all going to be fine. And like you said, he already has seven points and he's shooting a little bit more too, which is nice. Uh, last question here. Oh, I'll, actually, second last question. Um, Reese's Pieces asks, what are your expectations for Mishkov this year? So we do have a little bit more data now that they've played seven games. Uh, he does have five points in, or sorry, six games. He has five points in six games, uh, is getting some really nice deployment. Uh, his time on ice is just under 19 minutes, uh, which is great in Philly. Uh, you don't get that a lot when you're a forward. So that, that is the most encouraging thing for me for Mishkov is, uh, is John Tortorella clearly is respecting the talent uh, and is playing him a ton. So that that is probably the most encouraging stat. Underlying individual numbers are not very good. Uh, his individual scoring chances for per 60 at 5v5, 384th in the last five games, 294th in shots per 60. Um, on ice numbers better. Uh, Corsi 4 per 60, 71st. Uh, scoring chances four per sixty, one hundred and thirty ninth. Not amazing, uh, but I think part of that is he plays with Owen Tippett for the for the most part, uh, mm-hmm. who shoots a ton. So that that makes a huge difference. But yeah, playing on the power play, they are converting pretty well, um, and part of that is because of the Mishkov effect. Uh, but yeah, on ice numbers, uh, on ice shooting percentage eight point six. That could get better. 
Um, but he is shooting at a high clip right now. He's shooting just under 30% uh, himself. So hard to know what to expect here. I think my uh, my projection is probably 60 points uh, for, for Michkov. Um, I, that wouldn't surprise me. I think things will probably improve. I think as the season goes on, he'll get a little bit better. Um, but he has shown the skill. Uh, the skill that we that we expect um, from Michkov and is getting the respect of John Tortorella, which was the biggest concern going into the year. So uh, I don't know, Blake, what are, what are your expectations here for Michkov? Yeah, I think 55, 60 points is probably where he lives this year. But I, I am really encouraged to see the power play time. That's that's the surprising piece. Like yeah. I projected him for like, you know, two minutes, 45 seconds because I thought they're going to, you know, yank him around a bit. Well, he's averaging four minutes, 41 seconds. I mean, granted, it's only six six games in, but that's what you want to see. Who knows what's going to happen, though, with Torts? Like I, you said, you think it's going to get better. I'm not so sure. Like. I mean, the only thing he has going for him in terms of like this team, you know, starting to tank a little bit and playing terribly, like it could go two ways. Like maybe Torts doesn't like the lack of defensive effort from Matt Vemichkov, which hasn't been terrible so far, but like maybe he doesn't like that. Maybe he minimizes him there or maybe he, his ice time goes up to the moon and like he's getting a 20 minute treatment when, you know, flyers are out of games and, and they're really riding him to see what they have here. Like, I'm not sure which one it is, but if he, if he starts getting even more time, like obviously we get more production, but one thing I'd like to see maybe him getting away from Owen Tippett a little bit because Tippett is an insane shooter. He's the ultimate chucker, right? But Mitchkov is a shooter too. And he's, I think when you're on a line with Tippett, he's the one at the end of passes, not Mitchkov. Yeah. So I want to see Mitchkov at the end of passes. I want to see, see him chucking pucks. Right. And he just hasn't been able to do that so far this season. So if that changes, yeah, then I would have to change my uh, projection for him a little bit as well. Yeah. You want exposure to good players though. That's the thing. Absolutely. And there really aren't many uh, on that team. I think yeah, maybe Morgan Frost, but even that is, I know, I, I know he was my pick of the week, but uh, well, don't, I don't, don't talk that. Yang on the tinkly winkly man. All right. Come on. <laughs> and, uh, I, I mean, Travis connect, he's really the only other person that I would yeah. love to see him play with, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not an amazing group, a forward group. There's a yeah. lot of potential there in Philly, but oh, it's what a just, diplomatic person you are. Oh, my not God, a lot dude. of, not a lot of conversion happening. Uh, the last question that we have here from the Discord, this is from Nate. He says, I thought this was an interesting one. Would you rather sleep on the street in downtown Belleville for a week or listen to Jack Edwards call every Bruins Leafs game for the rest of your life? Oh, God. Now, this is a fascinating question. <laughs> uh, Jack Edwards, I am pretty stoked that he's retired at this point because uh, that guy, I, I, I know Bruins fans love him. Uh, but he's tough to listen to. Maybe the most biased play-by-play uh, -play announcer that I've ever heard in my entire life. Uh, just the biggest Bruins homer. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they are so much more tolerable now that that broadcast is so much more tolerable now that Jack Edwards is gone. But there is something, something about it. I don't hate him the way that a lot of Leafs fans do. And I don't know if you know anything about downtown Belleville, but... You do not want to be there after dark. It's oh, God. it's because okay. I was terrifying. leaning that way. Okay, no, uh, you don't don't want to be there. Uh, I I'm trying to be as diplomatic as possible because I maybe know a little bit. No, working in healthcare uh, and uh, at the hospital in Belleville, I do see a lot more characters than maybe the average person does. So I'll try and be as diplomatic as possible on the mic here, but. You don't want to be there after dark, and I'm not sure that I would. I literally would survive <laughs> a week <laughs> sleeping in downtown Belleville. I'd certainly, uh, my life would be changed forever, uh, one way or another, or I would just be dead. So it, it, it's it's All not right. a great spot. I think uh, there's so much, uh, a lot of drugs happening, so much meth. Uh, and, uh, with yeah. meth comes just, you know, random acts of violence and, uh, it, it happens a lot. There's a lot of underreported violence. Belleville has been on the national news a lot uh, in terms of, of records being broken, uh, with overdoses <laughs> happening, da happening downtown. Oh, I don't know if you've okay. seen that Blake, but in the summertime, uh, there was there was a moment where within half an hour, I believe there were 20 overdoses, uh, people dropping like flies. They had to close oh, down man. downtown. 
and uh it's 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 not a good situation there right now so uh yeah i would <laughs> so <laughs> what, said so what are you saying uh you still I'm, would be out on the street or you no i'm good with jack edwards you're, you're jack uh edwards. calling bruins the leafs games i that's that's what i'm saying at this point it's a nostalgic thing um even if it's even if it's negative nostalgia um and i i like my life you know i i, I would like to to survive longer than a week so that that would be my answer at this point. Okay, yeah, I mean, I got a little bit of Jack Edwards stuff here too. I mean, obviously Canucks and Bruins. This guy's terrible, but uh, you know what? I was leaning, uh, you know, just hanging out in the street in the nice weather. But uh, you know, based on that report, I guess I have to listen to Jack Edwards. But uh, also, I got to cancel my plane trip out to uh, Belleville here. I was going to come visit you, and now, I mean, you've you've given me a terrible Yelp review on the city, and uh, you know, I'm going to have to double think that. But uh, you know, uh, I, I will say Blake, some some real beauties, though, buddy. I'll tell you that right now. I, I will say, Blake, uh, if if you were to come to Belleville, you'd have a place to stay, uh, and I we live probably in one of the nicer neighborhoods in in town. Uh, so I I'm uh, uh, it's 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 pretty secluded from the the sketchiness oh i want so. the whole experience buddy all right yeah I, okay uh, I, all right I, I well i mean we can do the, that yeah. too i spent some time in the downtown too. east side here in, in vancouver as well just when i was living in vancouver so i'm hip buddy i know what's going on so yeah lots of lots of different different people different ways of life but yeah. uh you know like i said belleville's pro uh, produced a lot of beauties yourself included my man thanks man yeah we got we got uh nick cousins yeah, got, Nick Cousins, a well-loved uh, uh, hockey personality. Drew Bannister, Mark Crawford. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, Mark Crawford. You've got you probably got some nostalgia for Mark Crawford. I do. He's not very, not very good nostalgia, but yeah, I mean, yeah, he's got a beautiful head of hair. All right, we knew that. He sure does. He sure yeah, does. He really he's does. A, yeah. He's a he's a silver fox. That's like, for sure. Okay. All right. Uh, that's all we got for today. Please leave us a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Thank you to those who already have. It's helped us a ton with our audience growth. And and Blake has mentioned uh, on the other podcasts, if you leave us a review with a comment, we're probably going to read it on the show. So so please do that. That that helps us even more. Um, and and we we just really like to read your comments. Positive we need or to negative. be validated. Although yeah. we do we do prefer positive comments. I I, I will be honest. Just for just for overall mental health uh subscribe to our youtube channel things have been popping over there we've got lots of fun video content there um and if you if you like looking at our faces and, and looking at, at at you know our fits the things that we're wearing um our, our our fun little backgrounds blake's got some fun things on his little ledge behind him there uh i've got my my blue wall and 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 uh my funko pops and shit uh so uh that's that's fun. If you're interested in that, head on over to the Most YouTube people channel. are, yeah. That's true. Uh, also, if you like our content, check out the Apples and Genos Patreon to support us on a monthly basis. Hop into the Apples and Genos Discord server. We're having tons of discussions about fantasy hockey in there. We're almost at 1,500 members uh, in the Discord, which is pretty fun. So, uh, yeah, if you're the 1,500th member, are we are we getting uh, Apples and Genos uh, oven mitt there, Blake? You bet, buddy. Oh my! I might get some special knitted socks. I don't know, sublimated apples and Geno socks. I don't know. We got. I got to think about this. But yes, I our fifteen hundredth member is getting something. I love that Vista Print. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They they do a lot of things over there. Um, shout out to the band. They're there for providing our music. There are Spotify links in the episode description. Follow us on X. Nate is at Apples Genos. Blake is at Blake Creamer AG. I'm at Just Josh and Four One. Check out Gugsy in the chat as or in the Discord as well. He doesn't have Twitter, uh, but he is at Gugs uh, in the Discord. Uh, please practice safe stats and happy streaming. Have a good one, folks. Excellent. Soon the championship will be ours, all ours.